Life should not be so complicated. At least that is what Janet Oluwatobi thought, what she believed. She grew up thinking that a fairy tale life was meant for everyone. The fancy car, good husband, beautiful children who will run around a lovely house, and all that comes with greatness. But unfortunately, life was unfolding to her and she didn't like the picture it presented. She sat on her dressing stool and stared at her reflection in the mirror. She looked dazzling in her light makeup that consisted of fred and nude look. Her well-arranged hair which fell to the back of her neck and her pale earrings. The only thing missing from her face was the smile that over time had been washed away. Her intelligent eyes no longer shimmered. They grew dull with each passing day. Her angel white teeth couldn't be seen so often. Her lips, which were always twisted to a frown, covered it fully, leaving room for the imagination of her onlookers. A male figure walked into the room. He wore a navy blue two-piece suit and a black Oxford shoe to match. His hair was neatly combed and his clothes were well ironed. His body fitted perfectly into the suit and he had a dazzling smile. He was none other than Rutimi Oluwatobi, Janet's husband. His countenance fell when he saw Janet's regular countenance. Honey, how many times will you do this to yourself? He asked while walking towards her. Janet was too tired to talk and all she could offer was a loud sigh. Will you please stop it? Rotimi asked. No, Rotimi. She finally spoke. Still, her voice came out like a whisper. She turned from staring at the mirror to staring at the man she called her husband. I told you, Rotimi. I told you that I don't want this party, but you never listened to me. Darling, it's our seventh anniversary. What's wrong with spending it with our family and friends? Rotimi asked. Everything is wrong, Rotimi. Every single thing is wrong with it. Let me ask you a question. Do you enjoy watching me being humiliated? You know your family members will team up with some of your friends and haunt me today because of my condition. But darling, it is not your fault. I know. But they never listen to that. No, they prefer it if I'm suffering. They find pleasure in hunting me. But I don't blame them, Rotimi. me. We have been married for seven years. Seven years, and yet we have nothing to show for it. Janet didn't bother about her makeup anymore. She allowed the tears to fall. They were going to fall after all. It was better she cried in her room with the one person she could trust and to cry amidst those people she called family and friends. Rotimi allowed her tears to fall. She knew that they weren't of joy but of pain, sadness, a deep sense of longing, and a feeling of emptiness. Janet's tears were uncontrollable. She had been crying for ages, but she never found the place she was looking for. Help never came her way, and she was slowly starting to lose hope. She could still recall vividly the events that culminated to her wedding day seven years ago. It was the best day of her life. Darling, Rotimi screamed, and the sound broke into Janet's thoughts and brought her back to reality. She looked at Rotimi with empty, sad eyes. Babe, just a few hours with them, and then they'll be gone, I promise. Rotimi wasn't a fan of the fact that the people who got married in the same year as they did, would occasionally ask how his family was. Some were ignorant of his present condition, being that they hadn't seen him in years, and some were only trying to make a mockery of him. Rotimi had made up his mind to not shy away from his feelings. He would put up a show because he believed that children are a gift from God, and that sooner than later, he and his wife would be blessed with beautiful ones. A knock was heard at the door. The door slightly opened to reveal pressures they are made. The guests have started to arrive, sir. Thank you, precious. We'll be down in a moment, Rotimi said, and Richard took a bow 
and left the room. Babe brought me addressed his wife. We need to go, I promise you. I won't let anything happen to you. He promised, kissed her forehead, and Janet responded with a smile. The party had begun downstairs. Janet could see some of her friends and her husband's friends and family. She took a deep breath, forced a smile onto her face, and walked down the stairs elegantly. Rotimi never let go of her hand as he walked around the room, greeting their friends and family. Everyone was nice to them, and Janet wasn't feeling the sore truth she normally felt on the back of her truth. But all that changed when she got to Rotimi's mother. The woman was a vile person who didn't care about embarrassing anybody. I hope you don't want to greet me with that which wrapped around your arms. She addressed the statement to her son. Janet was about to withdraw her hand, but Rotimi held her back. Mom, she's my wife, not a witch, Rotimi responded. See, that's where you're wrong, son. That's where you're wrong. A wife is supposed to be able to bear children for her husband. But that is not the case with this God-forsaken woman that you brought into our family. Just imagine, after seven years of marriage, she has nothing to show for it, not even a miscarriage. And you call her a wife? No, son, she's a witch, sent from the underworld to ruin your life. And the sooner you get away from her, the better. Rotimi's mother didn't try to mellow her voice. She screamed every word attracting a lot of attention to them. And just as Janet expected, her anniversary party was ruined and the witch's past started. It's true, she's a witch. I always knew it. Look at the way she dressed and she is always on red lipsticks. That only signifies witchcraft. Oh, I pity the young man she is married to. These amongst others, where the words that rushed from the crowd into Janet's ears. With tears in her eyes, she ran away from them all. Amidst her tears, she could hear her best friend calling and running after her. The woman finally caught up with Janet on the balcony, and although it was cold, Janet's insides were burning. Why do they treat me like this? Is it a sin to not be pregnant? Janet cried and fell to the ground, and her friend held her in her arms. Faith, her friend, could feel her entire body trembling and it broke her heart. She waited, allowing Janet to cry to her heart's content. It was better to let it out than to hold it in. After a few minutes, she spoke up. I'm so sorry, dear, but why can't you just tell them the truth? I feel like they will go easy on you if they knew the truth. Janet jumped out of Faith's arm. No. They cannot know the truth. I won't do that to Rotimi, Janet said. Rotimi had stood by her for the seven years they had been together. He had never for once made her feel inadequate because of the condition they were in. He treated her with respect, love, and understanding. He worshipped the ground she walked upon. Janet shook her head. She couldn't repay him by telling the truth. I can't do it, Faith, she said and walked away to go look for her darling husband. His arms were the only place she wanted to be. Rotimi had turned round the house in search of Janet to no avail. He knew she was hurting. He could feel it, and he desperately wanted to be with her and tell her that everything would be all right. Then he screamed as he walked around the house, still looking for her. He heard a door open, and when he turned around, he saw a beautiful lady dressed in red. Jane isn't here, but I can help you look for her. The woman's voice was alluring, and she took slow steps towards Rotimi. She had on a body dress that exposed her cleavage. Rotimi couldn't recognize her as being one of Jane's friends. In fact, he couldn't recognize her at all. Out of curiosity, he asked, Sorry, do I know you? It depends. She took her pinky finger and ran it down Rotimi's chest. Do I look appealing to you? Before Rotimi could answer, she pinned him to the wall and her lips were on his. Rotimi felt goosebumps on his skin and didn't know how to respond, so he did nothing but allow the vixen to have her way. A gasp broke into his hazy thoughts and he pushed the woman away. 
to see his wife standing a few inches away from them with tears in her eyes. Janet, please, I can explain. Janet didn't wait for his flimsy excuses. She turned around with one motive in mind, to leave Rotimi. Rotimi ran after her, screaming her name, but Janet didn't stop. She wanted to be excluded from everything that had to do with him. For the first time in a long time, she wasn't sad, just angry. She rushed through the parlor and didn't notice when she brushed her shoulders against Rotimi's mothers. Hey, wash it, you witch! The woman screamed, and this brought Janet to a halt. She wanted revenge, and she was going to get it. If Rotimi didn't care about insulting her and making a mockery of her in front of her family and friends, she wouldn't care either. What did you just call me? She asked. I called you a witch. Isn't that what you are? Rotimi's mother didn't care that Janet was standing her ground. She had waited for the day for months. You know, mother-in-law, I believe you are calling me a witch because you think that it's my fault that your darling son is childless. Well, if that is the case, then it shouldn't be me who gets addressed by that name. It should be your son. She could hear the gasps, but Janet didn't stop. For years, she had allowed Rotimi and his family to walk all over her. Well, all that was about to end, and she would see to it personally. Yes, mother-in-law, your son is the reason why we can't have a baby. It's not because I was reckless as a teenager. You can ask your son, and he will tell you that I married him as a virgin. But it's his fault that we can't have a baby. The problem is from him, not me. She screamed, finally feeling freedom wash over her. Janet, wrote me says soberly, and Janet turned to look at him. She walked closer to him and spoke. You. You never listen to me. You always have to do things your way. To you, I'm not your equal. Just a minority. And that is why you feel like and cheat on me. Well, I have news for you, mister. We are over. Yes, I want divorce with me. And I want it as soon as possible. Janet finished her sentence and slammed the door as she walked into her room. Immediately she was in, she fell to the floor and allowed the tears to fall. Rotimi's mother stood, frozen from the news she just heard. She didn't know if she should apologize to Janet or scold her son. She chose a second option, and before she could turn around, Rotimi stormed out of the house and drove to a nearby bar with one thing in mind, to drink till he can't feel anymore. He got to the bar, and immediately ordered two bottles of whiskey. Rotimi took fast shots of the drink, wanting it to kick in as fast as possible. His life has just been ruined, and he had no one else but himself to blame for it. Now he was going to lose the only woman he could ever love, all because of a few seconds of pleasure. Take it easy there, brother. He heard a voice from behind him. Slowly, he put down the glass that was almost close to his lips. Something about the voice sounded very familiar, and he turned around to see his childhood friend, Joshua. Joshua? He asked. His gaze was a bit fuzzy due to the alcohol. Still, he could recognize the man any time. Joshua's heart leaped for joy when he saw his long-lost friend. He had left Nigeria to further his studies in medicine, and somehow he lost touch with Rotimi. Immediately he got back into town. He was the first person he reached out to. The two friends exchanged pleasantries, happy to be reunited once again. Dude, what's wrong? Joshua asked when he noticed the soft countenance on Rotimi's face. It's a long story, he said. Joshua took the hint, paid for his friend's drinks, and drove him back to his apartment. After he had successfully gotten the man sober, he sat him down, and Rotimi indulged him in the story of his life. He left out no details and Joshua could feel the pain that his friend was going through. He was diagnosed with low sperm count, and as such, he couldn't get his wife pregnant, and he only told Janet after they had gotten married. Janet, out of love, stayed in the marriage with him, enduring all the insults and hiding his shame. But then he had to go and disgrace her by kissing another woman, and now she was leaving him. 
Rotimi hung his head low when he was done talking. I'm sorry, man. Truly, I am. But I think there's a solution to this problem. There's none, Rotimi answered. We have tried everything. I know you have tried everything, Joshua said. But I have many friends who are experts with this. Maybe we can talk to one of them and see if we can come up with a solution. Rotimi saw a ray of hope and held on tight to it. Yes, please, call them. He didn't know why, but something deep in him told him that his prayers may be answered this time. Joshua excused himself to make a few calls and soon came back with a smile on his face. Okay, I spoke with a friend and he said that he would need to see your medical report, but that the problem can easily be fixed. Rotimi took the good news and rushed home to his wife, who was still hurting from his betrayal. Janet made him no mind as he tried to apologize to her. But after a while, her anger lessened and she listened to the news he had for her. After she had carefully listened to all he had to say, she made up her mind. Rotimi, I promise you, if this doesn't work, I am leaving and I won't look back. She answered. Okay, he agreed. Rotimi had been told to never put all his eggs in one basket, but that was exactly what he did. The treatments began swiftly, and after a year, Janet got pregnant. At her hospital bed, where she had just given birth to a beautiful baby girl, surrounded by her family and friends, Rotimi's mother apologized to her for all the wrong she had done to her. Janet was void of words, but looking at the face of her daughter, all she could say was, Inumidu, Eowa, Nitori Dite, Nikoni, Olebe, Bomi Jamie. I'm glad you came because only your arrival could dry my tears.